I'm sorry, Muslims, but if you go to Jesus for that peace, I know there's something you're looking for. Mm -mm -mm. His attention. When you call upon the name of Jesus, you believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God and that God raised Him from the dead on the third day, you got His attention. Amen? Yes. And that's something you want. Praise God. The blind man got his attention. How? Jesus walked by him the first time. He said, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus kept walking. Uh-oh. He didn't get his attention. He had his attention, but Jesus wanted to see something else. And he said, Son of God, Son of David, have mercy on me. That's pretty much what he was saying, Son of God, in the side. And they told him to shut up, but Jesus stopped. He got Jesus' attention. Oh, have you, have you had the attention lately? Of the Lord Jesus. That's another promise you can possess. Yeah. When, you, when you're in the middle of something and you need something and you're blinded by things, maybe it's not physically, maybe it's spiritually, you can't understand what's happening in the, your life right now, and you call out, Lord Jesus, open my eyes to see. He'll open your eyes. <coughs> yes, Lord. Don't ever give up, though. Don't just do it once. Ask, seek, and knock. And keep on knocking, praise God. Yes. Yeah, oh, His attention, His protection. But we're going to need that. From all the things that happen around, you've got floods, droughts, famines, earthquakes all over the place. You've got crazy storms happening. We need His protection like never before. You've got Louisiana drivers on the road. You've got potholes big as this church out there. Hello. <laughs> you need His protection. you got some crazy drivers out there, not mentioning no name. But uh, we need <coughs> supernatural protection. Amen. <laughs> His prosperity. <laughs> Praise God. I'm not a prosperity preacher, but God does <laughs> preach prosperity. When you serve Him, He'll take care of you. Yes. I don't care what the devil tells you in your ear. I don't care what them name and claim it jokers tell. Blab it, grab it, sow a seed and get it. I don't care what they say. If you believe in the Son of God, if you're one of His, He's going to take care of you in ways that you can't take care of yourself. That you won't even think to ask for. You know, we're thinking of the green stuff. Well, I need some money in the bank. I need some money in the bank. That ain't, that's not what you need. Jesus will give you what you need even though you're praying for something out of green. <laughs> Praise God, I'm happy now. He sees what we really need. Amen? Amen. So if the money don't appear in the bank, there's something else he's doing on the side that you can't see that he's doing. I promise you that. Amen. I've not seen that. That's a word. <laughs> his courage. Buddy, we need his courage to step out like Caleb and Joshua did against those huge giants in life. Those things I was talking about a while ago. Some of us have all kinds of giants that we're fighting right now. And you need the courage of the living God which is a promise for you to have. You can step out on faith, amen, and step off into that promise. And when you do, the supernatural power of God will manifest. Yes. Oh, let me keep on. Yes, let me, yes. I'm going to stay on this all day. Whew, his wisdom. Praise God. In Daniel chapter 12, it says knowledge will increase. That supernatural knowledge is increasing right now. There's things that you're learning that the church didn't know 50 years ago. That's right. There's things that He's revealing now by His Word and by His Holy Spirit that hasn't ever been revealed before. Yes. Y'all, that is amazing. We are in the dispensation and the time of wisdom. Reach out and grab hold of the promise. Don't just sit on the stump. Grab hold and say, Lord, I know we can possess this. I know I was born with a mental deficiency. I know I was born with ADHD. I had some type of problem in me. They tried to put me on this. I have no, I can't pay attention. Two, two seconds. I gotta go two, two, two. But I know, God, by this promise that you said in your word, that it says in James chapter one, verse five through seven, if any man need wisdom, amen. Let him ask of God who gives liberally, who will give to all the wisdom. And do not doubt, but possess that promise. He yes. I promise He'll give it to you. Ooh, you can stand on that promise. Don't just sit there and say, you know, I'm going to get, I think, hooked on phonics. If I get hooked on phonics, see, this phonics is going to help me. Man, don't get hooked on phonics. Get hooked on Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> oh, praise God. His Word. We got the promise that His Word is God breathed. I don't care what the people out there say, the religious folks or the, the atheists say about the Word being destroyed, about it being remade in 1611 by kings. I don't care what they say. The Holy Ghost tells us that the Scripture is God breathed. You can stand on it. You can stand on His promise and you can know that it will come to pass. 
Right. And some of us have watched it and seen it come to pass. Oh, yes. And some of us have seen it come to pass on the TV, on the news every yeah. night. Yeah. Oh, praise God. 19. His mysteries. <coughs> praise the Lord. That's what people are scared of right there. They don't mind listening to the traditional church service or the traditional preacher that preaches this and that and, and, and dots every I, crosses every T, and just has a denominational outline or an organizational organization outline and say, okay, we're going to call for salvation. But when the mysteries start coming forward, oh, yeah. people get kind of spooked. Yes. And they'll run on for you. They really will. Because when those mysteries come forth, we're held accountable for the mysteries that God sent us. Did y'all know that? Yes, indeed. See, whom, he who has been given much, you are held to a higher degree. You are held accountable. That's why many should not proclaim to be teachers, because they are held to a higher degree. God will give you the mysteries of his word. He will show you what he showed Paul. Yeah. Paul believed. Oh, yeah. He said, I believe. I'm not going to preach what I came out of. I'm going to preach the mysteries of God. Amen. And he prayed for us to know those mysteries. Now, what in the world, Dell, is holding us back? Let me keep on reading. Go to chapter 14, <coughs> verse 1. That's where I left off. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And why did they weep? Y'all think about that? Now, <coughs> Caleb and Joshua and even the unbelieving ten said this fruit is good. They brought back grapes that were huge. It took two men to carry a cluster of them. They showed all the awesome things of the promised land and yet now they're weeping. God says we're going to have this. I'm going to cry about it. I'm going to cry about it. Why are we weeping when God's given us these awesome right. great promises? That's right. Why is the church weeping and going everywhere looking for salvation, going everywhere looking for deliverance, going everywhere looking for something else. When God says, you got it, I'm going to give it to you, and I've already done it at the cross. And they're weeping. The only reason they're weeping is because they believe the evil over poor. That's right. How come it is that we believe the doubt and unbelief before we believe the supernatural? I'll tell you why in a minute. We can believe the evil report over the good report. Some a doctor could come in with an X-ray and say, "You know what? We thought you had cancer last week, but it, it turns out that it's clear." And you go home and say, "Well, I still got a tad bit of something up in there." <laughs> <laughs> you believe the evil report and start thinking, hey, "Maybe he just didn't find all the cancer." Man, it's clear. 